Hi, my name is Juliette Fox and I work for Future IQ Partners. And Future IQ Partners is a company that works around the world helping communities and organizations create and achieve their goals. One of the ways that we do that is through social network analysis or social network mapping. And we use this as a way to look at an overall system and see how well organized that system is toward achieving the goals. And whether you're a community or an organization, we use this in a way to give you the tools so that you can be strategic about what's the best way to be organized toward the goals that you want. So a social network analysis is uh, something that's been used by mathematicians, social network theorists, even computer scientists. We use it in a way that actually gives you practical tools in your community or organization to make the changes, the relationship changes, the grouping changes in a way that you can easily understand and easily implement. So let's talk about how we actually do that. You know, one of the ways that we do is if you look at this network, this is a network map, right? This is what we call the IQ network. And we'll talk a little bit about how that works, but one of the ways that we use it is really understanding the shape of a network. But let's do the basics first. So if you look here, here's the difference between a node. A node in these maps is just a person or, or an organization. It just represents one entity. The links are their relationships, and the relationships are based on your goals. So for instance, if you have an economic development goal, or if you are worried about an aging community, or you're dealing with poverty, or you're dealing with water sanitation, we use this network to understand how well organized the people are toward that goal. We ask very specific questions to find the links or the connections between those nodes to see how well organized or set up you are. But let's understand how an ideal network might be set up, especially if you want your system to be collaborative, innovative, creative, and resilient. That's what we're hearing from organizations and communities, that that's the way they want to go. So if you look at this, this network again, the IQ network, this is based on some work by Valdis Krebs and June Holly, who are social network theorists in the, in the industry. And what they have said is, when you look at the core of this network, you can see that there's a core, a big dense core here. The dense core represents lots of people working on a, on a project, lots of people working toward your goals. There's lots of people in the conversation, not just one or two, not just a few people, but it's based on a large group of people, lots of different kinds of people. You can see from the color coding that those different kinds of people are very specific. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. But the diversity is what you should notice. On the outside of the core is what we call the connectors. And we would say the connectors are probably the most important in your community or organization. Why? Because of the translators. They're the movers of the information. They're the movers of the knowledge. They're the connectors of resources. These need to be very diversified and many always building to that connector. So for instance, if you have some project where you're trying to move a message out of where you're talking about it to the masses, or even tap into their voices, or bring in resources toward that, you need to have a lot of connectors, understanding exactly what's going on in the core of a network and being able to communicate it out to the masses. That's why we find the connectors to be the most important. So what it, what it does then is finds the hidden relationships in your system. It finds the informal networks. It finds the clustering of certain kinds of people. And it's based on this theory by Cornelia Flora. And this is based on the community capitals framework. We like to use this framework for several reasons. It creates a new perspective in a system. It takes the perspective that you need to pay attention to each of these seven areas to really create resilience and have flourishing communities and organizations. How well integrated is infrastructure or built? How well integrated is political or human representation like education or human workforce? Those kinds of things reveal themselves in each of the areas. So we use the community capitals as a framework to decide how we look at the system and see how well diversified it is. So let's take a look at a few maps that we've actually used and see how we have pulled out the information to help people make changes toward the goals they want to make. So the first map, it, you can see, has no core density. Now, the core density would mean that just a couple of people are working on a project or toward a goal. Just a couple of people are being relied upon to do that. 
you can see that in this no core network is that the information and gathering and the core of the network doesn't doesn't uh, meet the needs of the goal so what we do in this situation is build that core build more diversified people having conversations about it now we often see this but we more often see the fact that we have a dense core lots of people working in it but we don't have diversity in that core for instance this might be an example of let's say an economic development initiative where in that initiative you have lots of people in financial and economic development in the core which are represented here by the blue and red but there's not a lot of diversity in it sometimes we think we see that when we have a map that looks like this we have lots of great ideas at the top but we don't have them actually being built out into programs and projects great ideas that maybe don't go anywhere the next map that you see here is we can identify a central figure which often doesn't represent the figure that's in an organizational chart or in a community chart. So we find out those hidden informal leaders. We also can see loosely connected networks. We can see um, marginalized groups and isolated groups, groups that are well outside the core or even the conversation. So we use these then as a tool to give communities and organizations to start to see who specifically what organizations or people specifically should be moved into the core? How much you need to build out those connectors? What might be the best strategies in creating groups or steering committees or any of the initiatives that you're going for? This is how we use the maps and social network analysis. So maybe you want, maybe you're doing a project right now where you can start to see how that might inform and build the capacity of some of the goals that you have. So thanks for listening today. It's a short social network analysis, and we'll see you next time.